Hello, my name is David Wishart. I'm a professor and Canada Research Chair in Computational Metabolomics at the University of Alberta in Canada. I'm here to talk to you about metabolites and their measurement in food using metabolomics. Let's begin by talking about metabolites. Metabolites are chemicals or small molecules produced during metabolism within living organisms. Metabolites play crucial roles in virtually every biological function, from energy production to cell signaling to detoxification. These molecules also play key roles in the functioning and dynamics of ecosystems by facilitating interactions within and between organisms, as well as with their environment. For example, many metabolites act as chemical signals that mediate interactions between species, while others contribute to nutrient cycling and soil regulation. What specific classes of molecules are classified as metabolites? Well, metabolites are a diverse range of molecules that can be further classified as primary metabolites and secondary or specialized metabolites. Primary metabolites include amino acids, which are needed to make proteins and enzymes, as well as lipids, steroids, and fatty acids that help keep cells intact or which sometimes function as hormones. They also include sugars that help provide energy and many other kinds of essential molecules that are key to growth, development, or reproduction. Now, specialized metabolites are considered non-essential metabolites. They're produced by plants, mushrooms, lichens, and bacteria, and they're not directly involved in growth, development, or reproduction. However, you should not let the term non-essential lead you to underestimate the role of these molecules for an organism and its survival. In many ways, specialized metabolites are quietly working behind the scenes with strategic roles to shape the ecosystems around us. Specialized metabolites play a role in food quality as key contributors to the flavor, color, aroma, and sensory experience of food along with its nutritional value and health benefits. For instance, the bright red color of tomatoes comes from lycopene, a specialized metabolite with antioxidant properties. The distinct aroma of bananas comes from a secondary metabolite called isoamyl acetate. The hot taste of chili peppers is due to a compound called capsaicin, another specialized metabolite. These compounds not only enhance the sensory experience of food, but also offer health attributes such as reducing inflammation or acting as antioxidants. Other specialized metabolites, when found in your blood or urine, such as proline betaine or asparagusic acid, can be used as chemical biomarkers to tell whether you ate oranges or asparagus for lunch. In other words, specialized metabolites can also be used to study human nutrition and dietary preferences. When we think of sustainability in food systems, specialized metabolites can also help reduce food waste by extending the shelf life of foods by acting as natural preservatives. For example, the phenolic flavonoids in many herbs have antimicrobial properties that inhibit the growth of spoilage microbes. These days, metabolites are often identified and characterized by scientists working in a field of science and foodomics called metabolomics. Metabolomic scientists like myself use specialized instruments called mass spectrometers to detect and quantify hundreds to thousands of primary and specialized metabolites at a time. Mass spectrometers are like million dollar weigh scales. They measure not only the weight of individual molecules, but also the weight of their individual fragments. These chemical fragment weights are unique to each molecule and serve as molecular weight fingerprints that allow scientists to look them up in databases and identify individual chemicals, the same way that police detectives use fingerprints to catch criminals. Now, before the advent of metabolomics, it was only possible to measure just a few highly abundant metabolites, such as certain sugars, some organic acids, 
and other miscellaneous chemicals at a time. What's more, it often took days or weeks to measure these compounds. Now, thanks to metabolomics, it is possible to measure hundreds of metabolites in just a few minutes, including those that are present in tiny quantities or which exist for only a few seconds. Indeed, metabolomics can identify and quantify hundreds of plant metabolites found in our food. There are two types of metabolomics, targeted metabolomics and untargeted metabolomics. Targeted metabolomics focuses on carefully measuring a predefined set of known metabolites and is commonly used to verify and quantify known compounds in food. Untargeted metabolomics aims to measure as many metabolites as possible without prior knowledge of what might be present. This approach is more exploratory and can reveal unexpected or unknown compounds in foods such as tomatoes. Even though metabolomics allows us to identify thousands of metabolites in all kinds of biological samples, including food, there are still thousands more that we can't identify. These unidentified or unidentifiable chemicals are called the dark matter. This dark matter is thought to constitute up to 90% of the signals or probable chemicals we see in a metabolomics experiment. With so much dark matter out there, it's clear we are only seeing the tip of the chemical iceberg. This dark matter represents a key frontier for discovery and innovation in food chemistry, as these unknown chemicals could have applications in medicine, agriculture, and food science. For instance, some of these still-to-be-discovered metabolites might lead to new drugs new compounds that improve crop resilience, or new specialized metabolites that enhance the flavor, aroma, or shelf life of foods like tomatoes. However, to find these compounds, we have to do discovery research first and catalog what we can find. That's a key goal behind the Periodic Table of Foods Initiative, or PTFI. The PTFI database has an incredible diversity of specialized metabolites generated from its untargeted metabolomics methods. In my lab, we use artificial intelligence, or AI, to help predict and identify the compounds that constitute this metabolomic dark matter. We have taught one of our AI programs to predict novel, specialized metabolite structures by showing pictures of the structures of known specialized metabolites and telling the program to draw similar but different structures. We also use other AI programs to predict the mass spectrometry fingerprints of metabolites using only pictures of known or predicted chemical structures. This AI-based approach is helping us quickly identify more and more of the compounds found in the dark matter. Once these compounds are identified, then we can isolate them and figure out how they may be useful for food, health, or environmental sustainability applications. This process of going from understanding chemical structure to understanding function is one of the great challenges in food science. And this is also where AI can potentially help us. Metabolomics has the potential to address many societal challenges and promote the development of sustainable food systems. It is important to remember that specialized metabolites have given us many of the medicines and therapeutic products we depend on today. These include some from food plants, as well as some of the most widely used antibiotics, many of which were derived from specialized metabolites produced by microbes. Many pain-relieving drugs have their roots in specialized metabolites. Likewise, many food plants, particularly those at the nexus in food and health, have anti-inflammatory specialized metabolites, from tea to turmeric. 
Tabulomates can also be used to guide plant breeding programs to select and develop new crop varieties with enhanced nutritional content, better flavor, or improved resistance to drought, pests, and disease. Metabolomics can also detect contaminants, adulterants, and verify the authenticity or provenance of food products, such as olive oils, cheeses, fruit juices, or wines. Metabolomics can also be used to ensure safety and help with the monitoring of quality in the food supply chain. I hope this lesson has given you some inspiration about the study of specialized metabolites through metabolomics. These molecules are intricately linked with human and planetary health. They're how organisms communicate, collaborate, defend themselves, and sometimes compete. These molecules can be seen as nature's way of maintaining a balance within ecosystems and fostering biodiversity through creating complex interactions among species and within ecosystems. Specialized metabolites are essential in both the natural defense and the appeal of foods for humans ultimately supporting the diversity, flavor, and functionality of our food systems. Over the past decade, metabolomics has become a powerful tool that is transforming our understanding of biology, food, and health. By combining metabolomics with AI, we hope to extend this understanding even further and develop innovative solutions for a healthier, more sustainable future.